Welcome back friends. Now in this video tutorial we will be looking at uh, the mechanism of killing by beta lactam antibiotics. Right? Now we have seen uh, the introductory video about the beta lactam antibiotics which are uh, which is possessing all the penicillin, ampicillin, uh, amoxicillin and all these different antibiotics of this range and all of these beta lactam antibiotics are a kind of cell wall inhibitors. Right? Now we know that bacteria cells are having cell wall and that cell wall is important for holding its structure or structural integrity of the cell, right? Now if the cell wall synthesis is halted, in those cases the developing bacteria will die or the new bacteria which are growing will die. Now why? Because it is interfering with the development and the synthesis of cell wall. Okay, so let me write it here. So here we will be talking about the mode of action of beta lactam antibiotics okay now among the beta lactam the most common one penicillin okay now in this case as i have told you that whenever you're talking about this thing all of them all of them are cell wall synthesis cell wall synthesis inhibitor okay that means they interfere with the production of or synthesis of cell wall and as a result of that as a result of that they can only they can only attack uh, growing cells growing cells that means those bacterial cells which are developing which are growing and dividing which are growing its cell wall right because it interferes with the synthesis part right now if the peptidoglycan layer or the cell wall layer is getting synthesized completely in those case this beta lactam antibiotics will not work so print it just note it down right so it will not uh, work on the matured cells but it will work on the developing or the growing cells okay that's very important now they interfere with the cell wall synthesis now the major component of uh, this kind of cell wall is peptidoglycan peptidoglycan right now the peptidoglycan of those bacteria okay it can be present in gram positive bacteria as well as in gram negative bacteria in all the bacteria this peptidoglycan layer is made up with two important components and those important components are so let me talk about those important components are n acetyl muramic acid or nam so let me write the full form here in so in acetyl muramic acid and another important component that is termed as nag or n acetyl glucosamine so let me write n acetyl glucosamine okay so these are the two important components of a peptidog of a bacterial cell wall and we know that this cell wall is composed of these two important things a nam and nag right and this nam and nag combined together forms what we know as peptidoglycan now this peptidoglycan is the sole and most important material of a cell wall now that is giving all the rigidity to a cell wall now what we know if i draw the structure of a bacterial cell it will be very clear so let me draw a bacterial cell let's say here in this case if this is a bacterial cell now this bacterial cell is having the cell membrane so whatever I, whatever i have drawn with this black uh, line it is a cell membrane which is a primary membrane right and surrounding this membrane what we'll be having we are having another layer which is a thick kind of layer for gram positive bacteria and a thin kind of layer for gram negative bacteria now this red color this this positive this this layer is termed as peptidoglycan layer or a kind of cell wall okay and obviously there is a small gap region placed there between the cell membrane and cell wall that region is called periplasmic space for gram negative bacteria but for gram positive bacteria that is all that is called periplasm okay so that is very very important so let me talk about it this this internal layer is called cell membrane this red layer is peptidoglycan peptidoglycan or cell wall and the intermediate space between the cell membrane and cell wall it is termed as 
it is termed I haven't drawn it it is termed as periplasm right now in this image I have drawn the image of a gram positive so let me write I have drawn the bacteria which is G plus or gram positive in nature now for gram negative bacteria what is the structure similarly this structure will remain like that uh, except for this peptidoglycan layer will be very thin and there will be another external cell membrane layer outside that is called the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria okay so that's the difference for gram positive there are much more thicker peptidoglycan from gram negative thinner peptidoglycan okay now in this case on, uh, as a result uh, this combination of this nag and nam is true for gram positive as well as for for gram negative in all bacteria this thing is same okay now uh, we are talking about the activity or mode of action by beta lactam antibiotics right so let me write one of these names penicillin right so let me write penicillin mode of action now penicillin as we know they are beta lactam ring containing uh, antibiotics that means if I draw the structure simpler structure of penicillin I am not doing the the actual kind of structures it will something look like this so it actually consists of it actually consists of a four ring four carbon ring like that and also five carbon so two rings are attached like that so this is a kind of beta lactam ring okay so let me write beta lactam ring beta lactam ring okay now Antibiotics containing this beta lactam ring will be the part of beta lactam antibiotics like penicillin, amoxicillin, ampicillin, and all these things. And also, we are having carbapenems uh, like that. Okay, uh, cephalosporins, and also. Now, in this case, what we can see is that this antibiotics will disrupt the synthesis of this peptidoglycan. Right? Now, how? For the for understanding the mechanism by this antibiotic, what we need to understand is the process of synthesis of this peptidoglycan layer right so let us talk about the synthesis process of peptidoglycan layer a little bit now peptidoglycan layer synthesis in gram positive bacteria now remember another thing I must tell you before going into the discussion is that gram positive bacteria contains higher concentration or higher percentage of peptidoglycan than gram negative so this action of beta lactam antibiotics sorry for that now uh, the e effectiveness of beta lactam antibiotics will be higher or more for gram positive bacteria and very few for gram negative bacteria so right so whenever using gram uh, beta lactam antibiotics we are targeting gram positive bacteria okay now let us talk about here now in this case what we know is that we are having we are having let's say here this is this is the cell membrane now here it begins the cell wall Right. So let's say this is the from here it, it starts the synthesis of cell wall in this place, right? So here it will be the region of cell wall, and this is the region which we call as a periplasm, right? So let me write it here. We call it a periplasm, right? Here it this is the cytoplasm inside the cell. Now inside the cytoplasm, this process, the whole process of peptidoglycan assembly begins in cytoplasm. And then they will start to arrange just like adding bricks to make a home or room or whatever to make a uh, building. It's simply adding building blocks. So blocks are added one by one and then joining and putting all these things together to make a construction. Simple as that. Because what we are uh, providing here as cell wall, it's a wall, right? And to provide wall, what we need to provide, we need to provide a building block which is brick. Now in this case, the building block or brick are this nag and nag and nam right so we need to provide these bricks and join those bricks to finally make the thing. so the first step of this peptidoglycan synthesis begins in cytoplasm where where first NAM is taken so NAM is there let's say this is the NAM and five different amino acid residues are added to NAM right so just find it five different amino acid residues one two three four five so five amino acid residues all of them are amino acid residues are added and among this amino acid residues last two one are alanine alanine or DLR DLR residues this is very common this is common to all this case right so this is the first step addition of this amino acid residues to NAM now the second step is that it brings NAG in very close proximity so it brings nag now 
nag now there and nag will be attached to nam in this case so now nag will come and bind with nam this is the second step so let me write the steps here so first step is the attachment of amino acid second step is the attachment of nag with nam containing amino acid now this nag nam complex will be migrating from this membrane to through the periplasmic space finally they will go and join the developing cell wall now remember there is not a certain time where you find not a single nag nam residue in 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 this cell wall making region there is always there is always the presence of nag nam complex there in this cell wall uh, region or cell wall building region and that complex is called cell wall building block right so cell wall building block always present there so let's say here it is a nag nam residue attached all the time so so all the nag nams are attached like that so it is present all the time like that okay now what what in this second case what they are doing here they are simply let's say it is developing like that it is also developing so it's a developing wall right now what it is providing is providing some signal inside the cell and it is telling that yes we will require more nag nam complex to so bring them on and it will go and will be added one after another right so this nag nam complex will be migrating to the periplasm through the periplasm they will go and attach to the previously placed brick of this wall right which is another nag nam complex so they will go and this complex will be added here right will be added here now i i uh, must tell you another important thing is that previously added bricks are also having this nag nam complex and they are also having this five different amino acid sequence added with nam but not nag remember it is added with only nam right so here also let's say let's say in this case in this case let's talk about here so let's say this one this particular nag nam complex they are providing this amino acid residues so here are the amino acid residues uh, so it's a nag a nam complex providing the amino acid residues now this new nag nam complex will move and as they are moving what they are having they are having here it is and they will start providing their amino acid residues right so if i draw it here it will look something like that now in the previous case here will be another nag now the nam and from this nam there will be five amino acid residues coming out right so this is the previous one for example so let's say this is the uh, this is the previous one previous one added previously now this is the new one which is moving from here to here so this part is this and this new one is this right now as they are providing this alanine uh, as they are providing this amino acid sequences five amino acid sequences each right now last one one amino acid are cleaved and chopped away okay so as they are chopped away so let me talk about it. so first one of each will be chopped away so here it will chop away one amino acid and here from here it will move another alanine amino acid outside after that what they will do they will cross link this terminal amino acid sequence with each other right so what we are looking at two important steps first step is to chopping them away chopping one amino acid sequence away from the five amino acid chain now this first task is mediated by an enzyme and it is called as it is called as transpeptidase transpeptidase or transpeptidase now this transpeptidase will cleave one amino acid away from each five amino acid chain now the second important task is to join these two thing with each other right so then they will join these two thing with each other now this cross linking is mediated by another enzyme and it is called dla carboxy peptidase or simply carboxy peptidase right so these are the two important enzymes we need to look for transpeptidase which is chopping uh, amino acid away then dla carboxypeptidase or dl anil carboxypeptidase this is cross linking the terminal amino acid with each other now after this cross linking is done what we get is that previous set of nag nam is now linked with the new set of nag nam and what we get a complete build up of 
the wall a complete build up of peptidoglycan that's the peptidoglycan synthesis pathway inside the cell okay now beta lactam antibiotics interferes with this process now in which region they are interfering they are interfering with the binding of this transpeptidase and d ala carboxypeptidase in this case so it is blocking these two enzymes transpeptidase and carboxypeptidase right now what they are doing because these transpeptidase are having a perfectly fit structure which will go and bind with this terminal region and cleave this uh, one amino acid away right so now let's say let's say it is having a structure like this it is it will move here it will go and cleave one amino acid away now this beta lactam is having it is having a structure to sit onto this region right to, to completely have a perfect fit onto this region right so if this is the enzyme so let me write if this is the enzyme and its substrate is one amino acid the terminal amino acid then in this case this beta lactam antibiotics are acting as the competitive inhibitor of this enzyme right because they are competing for binding with the substrate now this inhibitor will go as the concentration of this beta lactam is going higher they will go and bind with this region as a result of the binding of beta lactam ring in this region this enzyme is unable to bind with the actual substrate as a result the process is halted right so that's the process of blocking of peptidoglycan synthesis right so it can block this first enzyme or transpeptidase enzyme it can also block second or carboxypeptidase enzyme right in all these cases usually penicillin amoxicillin ampicillin they block this first one or sometimes uh, cephalosporins are there they block this carboxypeptidase activities like that right so due to the blockage of this enzymatic activity the processivity of the cell will be will be halted as a result of that as the cell is growing it requires to extend its barrier right now as a result of inadequate supply of nagnam there inadequate binding of nagnam there the the wall will become very very thin and it will become very weak as a result of this weak wall i must tell you another important point for gram negative gram positive bacteria the osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure is very very high inside so it will provide a very high osmotic pressure into the wall as a result of this higher osmotic pressure and a very weak cell wall outside the cell wall ruptures and the bacteria ultimately dies so that's how this beta lactam antibiotics interfere with the synthesis of peptidoglycan and eventually kill the bacterial cell so eventually the activity of this penicillin and beta lactams are to kill the cell so they are bactericidal remember there are two types of activity bactericidal and bacteriostatic now as they are killing so that's why they are of bactericidal antibiotics okay so that's how they can kill the cell and i hope that's helpful thank you